Hi, I'm Tim Aubrey and welcome back to DMAD's free QGIS courses. Today is lesson 16 and in this lesson we're going to look at how we can calculate the area of a polygon. Um, in the previous lessons we've been looking at the potential habitat uh, of a fictitious animal and we're going to carry on with that example and we're going to look at the areas of these polygons. Please remember to keep liking, subscribing, and most importantly, sharing these videos so that we can reach as many people as possible. Okay, so you will remember that we left our survey map looking a bit like this. And today I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to look at the area of something. So if I just zoom in to one of our larger areas, we can very simply just use this measurement tool which was built into the toolbar if we just want rough and ready measurements and there's a number of different measurements we can select here I'm going to go with kilometers but you can go with whatever you want and then you just click at the edge of your shape and you'll see that up here it tells me how many uh, kilometers my first line is and down the bottom we get a cumulative measurement so I'm just going to go down the, roughly down the middle of my shape Okay, and then I can just right click to finish that, and that gives me a total area, uh, sorry, a total length of 8.194 kilometers. Uh, obviously, I can change that into whatever I want feet, yards, and it will do the calculation for me on the spot. So that's one quick way, and actually, it is something that I use occasionally um, when it doesn't need to be accurate. Likewise, we can do the same with angles. Um, Oh, not angle, sorry, um, with area to get the same thing in kilometers squared. So, again, this is just a really rough and ready measurement, just to more to demonstrate than anything. And if I was doing this for real, I'd obviously concentrate a bit more, take a bit more time. And once again, when I'm happy with that, I can just right click and it gives me an area of 9.549 kilometers squared, uh, which is probably a reasonable estimate of the area. But as you can see, as our shapes get more and more complicated, it becomes harder and harder to trace the lines. And if we were to do it properly, we could be here all day. Um, if we wanted to make it more accurate, we could um, have actually gone up to project and turned our snapping properties on. And just to make sure that we got all of the um, all the vertices, but again, this would take a long time. And if we go back to our sort of country layer level, then we've got lots of different of these potential habitats. So um, yeah, we don't really want to be going around to calculate them individually. So that can be great if you just want a one-off rough and ready measurement. But what I'm going to show you next is. Um, probably a slightly better way of doing things. So before we do this we want to make sure that um, firstly we're using the right measurements that we want. So go to project and properties and under general and measurements we just want to go units for distant measurements and make sure it's on whatever you want to use. I want to use kilometers so I'm using kilometers and square kilometers. Then I'm just going to hit apply and OK. I've not changed it, but if you changed it, then make sure you hit apply and OK. And the next thing I'm going to do is go right click on my layer and go to properties. Go to source. And just check that our coordinate reference system is what we want it to be. So. Uh, it's UTM 34N, which is great because we know we can use kilometers and uh, meters and linear measurements there, and we're not using things like degrees, which although they're useful on 3D, uh, are really difficult to interpret in terms of areas and things. Okay, so both those are, are correct, and that's great. Um, but if we go into the attribute table, so just right click on our layer and go to attribute table, you'll notice that we just have one polygon. Um, and normally we'd expect to see there's probably at least 20 polygons there so we'd expect to see 1 to 20 down here um, so what we're going to do 
is we're just going to split these into their, their polygons. It's just because this is how it comes through as the output layer. Um, it's called a multi-part polygon and we want single part polygons. So we're going to go up to vector, we're going to go to geometry tools and then we're just going to go from multi-part to single part. Uh, so it's our potential survey area and I'm just going to save it as well. Um, let's just call it I'll oh, save it into lesson 16. Okay, so let's call it potential areas and click run. And you can see it comes up over the top of our other layer. And if I right click and go to open attribute table now you can see we've got all the different polygons so I said there's at least 20 but actually there's over 100 polygons um, and we've got all this stuff here with the ISO etc etc which is a bit useless so I'm just gonna right click and go on hide column this is just information which was brought through from our previous layers but obviously because we're not looking at the rivers and streams anymore it's a combination of things within one kilometers of the river and stream and um, I'll leave that column in and also the altitude then um, yeah that data is a bit null and void now okay so that's great now we've got all them all as individual um, single part polygons rather than just one big multi-part polygon so once we've done that we can go to our attribute table and we just come across to open field calculator make it editable first um, you actually don't have to but just have it open field calculator um, we're creating a new field and we're going to call our output field name uh, area and then here we've got our field calculator and I did it this way just because I wanted to sort of introduce you a bit to the field calculator and get you a bit more comfortable with using this and we just put a dollar sign and then area and you'll see that it's come up now I can click OK and now we've got our area um, and these are in these are areas that sh which are less than one kilometer well less than 0 0.5 so they've been rounded down that's why it says zero but you can see we've got a different area in kilometers squared which is great okay so that's for this for, that's it for this lesson next lesson we're going to look at how we can um, do some advanced labeling to show you this area on our map because that could be a really useful thing for us to be able to see okay I'll see you then bye